Most of the real activity in all of this, of course, occurred B B.C., before computers. It started out as the telegraph operators sent, they were on duty on, New on Christmas Eve. They had nothing to do. Nobody was sending the telegram out particularly. So they made up these pictures to send to each other, from one telegraph operator to another, around the country, around the world. That was teletype in those days. So we started typing to each other. Every time you sent one, there were 20 guys out there all punching tapes on it as they received it. And they would then go on the air the next day and talk to their other friends and send it to them and it just it went on and on. Computers have basically wiped it out, you might say. I mean, it's no big turn on for a young kid today. A young kid, I don't know how they would get interested in it. You know, they'd say, so what? You know, I, hell, I can do blah, blah, blah with a computer. So that, uh, that time is gone. I've, I've tried to explain what ANSI and art groups and the meaning behind it is many times and never once have I been successful at it. I mean, these things are so hard to verbalize, to vocalize, to, to paint this picture of an entire subculture that most people have no idea has ever existed. If the definition had to be down to a, a simple one sentence kind of deal, uh, an, an organization of individuals using BBSs to produce and distribute artwork. Making your board individually you was the most important thing. It would, was the thing that would bring people back. Even then, content was king. People wouldn't come back to your board if it was the same menus day in and day out, week after week. It, you had to keep the same menu structure because people would get to using it fast, you know, key, 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 when they wanted to go to a particular board. But you would also want to change the look and layout and feel of the thing a little bit. That would keep people interested. It would keep them coming back. It's not like the internet where you have email, you send an email and it goes right to that person. And then if you want to send an mail to somebody, you had to make sure that you were on the right board that they were on also. You also had to make sure that you were on the board that they probably would check it sometime. At first it was cool, you know, to see colored text. You know, when you first saw your answer colored text, you know, that's kind of cool. But then these people took it to a whole different level that I had never seen before. And it, you know, it motivated me because I had an artistic background. They use different characters on the keyboard to like sort of represent like, like a, you know, a four, the way a four is shaped. Like they can use that to make a curve or something like that. Or like a, a B would be like, you know, it's shaped like, like this. And that would sort of like be like a curve going down. You know what I mean? And they'd have dollar signs and things like that to really bring out textures. What made ANSI was the, like how creative you were with it. A third of any ANSI is just being technical enough to, to know how to trick the, the ANSI code into to creating like the effect you wanted to. There were tons of groups. I mean, Blade, CIA, Union was a huge one. Valiant, there's Legend. The Gothic. Vore was Vision of Reality. Rock was Rulers of Chaos, that was my group. There's just been numerous art groups, Legion, that you could just go on forever. The competition was amazing between groups. Without the rivalry, you would have never seen the same level of production or interest or anything. Competition creates activity. Activity creates all of a sudden we have a scene. If you ran a BBS and you were involved in the art scene, or not even involved in the art scene, even if it was like pirating software, wares, uh, you know, whatever it may be, you knew of Acid. Acid was the basically the the entity of the art scene, the whole thing, it, it, uh, it's compilation. ICE actually formed as sort of a response to Acid, not, not really 
know, just to get acid, but they, it was sort of a second group. It really was good versus evil. It was acid versus ice. It was the single, you know, evil tyrant versus the collection of people who were trying to do the right thing. And while acid was very good, I, I really think it was pretty much an even, an even battle between the two. Um, I've been believing that acid was pretty much uh, at the center, pretty much of an evil group. I like ice. I like ice the most. I mean, they're the, they're the most popular ones. Acid. Acid always won. Ice was always number two, no matter what they ever did. Acid was always one step ahead of ice. Like it. One of the clips that you played for me about uh, acid always being a step ahead of ice, I believe this to be totally untrue. <laughs> I just like to get that on tape. Acid has always, always basically been number one. That's what it amounts to. It's never been questioned. Ice question it. Ooh, number one. No, you're not number one. Acid is number one. Will always be. Ice rules, acid sucks. <laughs> to rip someone's artwork was a huge, huge problem. It can be as simple as just <laughs> changing out the name and putting your name on it. And Style ripping is almost, it's almost like committing murder. You know, because basically what you've done is you've taken something that someone has created out of their own mind and taken it from them. It's like taking their child. How would one do that without being caught? You're always caught. That was the lowest form of art. Actually, um, you know, taking somebody else's piece and manipulating it so it's it's yours, but it's it's really not. Chances are, if you're ripping off ripping off an acid antsy, somebody's gonna know, and we're gonna find you pretty quickly, and we're gonna find out everything about you pretty quickly. <laughs> I actually experienced a time when one of my members stole uh, a, a font from another group and put it in our pack with his name on it. And I sent that out to everyone, all our distribution sites, everyone to review and rate. And someone came to me saying, your members, your members stealing. I remember uh, in the next month when I found out, formally apologizing to the group saying, I, I'm sorry this happened, I was unaware of it, I would not do that, that's not what we're here to do, we're here to make incredible art and try to recruit people to have a good time, but to uh, provide high quality art, and I apologize, and I remember writing apologizing and then telling him to fuck off out of the group as well. After we lost BBSs, the whole scene really fell apart, just because um, I think it had partially to do with the lack of a hierarchy on the, on the web. It has been so important to so many people for so long, and it really does belong on museum walls as far as I'm concerned. But I mean, really, it is a silly pastime, and a silly medium that has no practical use whatsoever, other than to maybe get yourself... 10 or 15 bucks from someone who will pay for your ANSI or to get your access to wares. Dude, I got and 40 to 50. Hi there, my name's Jason Scott. The BBS documentary took me four years to make. It required 200 interviews, thousands of miles worth of travel. This episode and the entire documentary is licensed Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 2.0, which means you can copy, mix, remix, or distribute it however you'd like. But I've created a really nice package, which I do sell, at bbsdocumentary.com.